for those of you out there who may be looking to homeschool for the first time this year, it is great to plan those breaks into your school year. It gives your kids something to look forward to. I mean, when we homeschool, we really do believe that the world is our classroom. And so wherever you go, like Abby said, life is a learning experience. Hi, you're listening to the Zan Tyler Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by BJU Press Homeschool. Homeschooling is an exciting adventure we take with our children. One of the most challenging parts of this journey is choosing the curriculum you want to use. BJU Press Homeschool is a curriculum you can trust. All the books, resources, and videos have been designed with you and your child in mind. Their curriculum is educationally robust and rich, taking into account that children have different learning styles, strengths, and needs. Mom, you are in charge. BJU Press Homeschool is here to come alongside and support you. Do you need help with the teaching load, or is there a subject you just don't want to teach? Their amazing video courses are available for all grades and almost every subject. BJU Press Homeschool believes that homeschooling can produce a new generation of students who know God, love their neighbors, and stand firm in their faith. For more information, go to BJUPressHomeschool.com. That's BJUPressHomeschool.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Zan Tyler podcast. Let me take just a minute to ask you to please subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen. And if this podcast has been encouraging to you, please leave us a review on Apple podcast. That really helps us. We're also available on YouTube and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I think you're really going to enjoy my conversation with Abby Knott today. Abby is a homeschool mom of four and has been homeschooling for eight years. We're going to discuss everything from using videos for instructional purposes to the realization that for the homeschool family, the world really is our classroom. As an added bonus, we're also talking about developing an entrepreneurial spirit in each of your children. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to be encouraged. Welcome, Abby. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So Joe and I interviewed Abby and her husband, Mike, for our Homeworks online party that was back in April. And Joe said, man, Abby is awesome. You need to have her on the podcast. And I said, yes, I don't know why we haven't done this before. So that is great. So Abby, tell me a little bit about your homeschooling journey, how you, how long you and Mike have been homeschooling and how you got into it. All right. So I have been homeschooling our children. We have four children and our oldest one, we started with K4 uh, back in 2013. So it has been we're going into our 10th year homeschooling okay. now. She's God, wrapping up eighth grade. Isn't it amazing how time flies? It is. I can't believe it. Gosh, she's, so she's wrapping up eighth grade? She so is. she'll be in high school this year. This she will year. be. Oh, man. That's that's a big thing. It is. It's very cool. It, it You know, it's funny because so many people quit homeschooling when they get to the high school years. And I want to say, man, that's when they're just, they become the greatest people and all your work is starting to pay off and they're your friends and they're fun. Why would you send them off then? You know? It's ninth grade. It's got, it's definitely scary a little bit just yeah. because of all the requirements that you have to do. So it's a lot more work for me as far as like making sure I'm getting all the requirements, but I am so excited for it. You know, it's funny because I, the way one mom expressed it to me, it's like, it's like until through eighth grade, it's not that it's just for fun, but there's a lot of fun to it. But in the ninth grade, you feel like you're going to have people looking at those transcripts and, you know, it just, it seems so like it's all the marbles or something, you know, and it, it, but but you know, I know how much you love your kids. And I, I finally, after the first year of high school, I learned to relax a little bit and bring some of our fun, you know, back into homeschooling. So Abby, you don't know this story, but when I started homeschooling Ty, it was night in the, you know, early 19, ni 1990s and there's just nothing for high school and there are no co-ops. And I think maybe BJU Press had that homeschool sat link thing. I could not do that. Joe was on the road. I could not do that. And so, and Lizzie was starting first grade. So I was needing to teach her how to read. And, and John was in the seventh grade. Ty was in the ninth grade. I thought, I can't do 
first grade, middle school, and high school. So I looked at John, who was in a seventh grader, and I said, I now pronounce you a ninth grader. <laughs> Bless his heart, he <laughs> rose to the occasion and did great. We finished high school with him when we, he was in the 10th grade. So we had two great years of internships and fun courses and it was fabulous. And, nice. Um, but, but, you know, there's something so, I was so scared of high school. And, um, but you've got some tips, I know. So I was actually homeschooled myself growing up um, from kindergarten through ninth grade and 10th through 12th grade. I and all five of my siblings went to our local public school, um, but my parents chose to homeschool us just because, well, I talked to my mom just to make sure I had the right reasoning. Um, I was pretty sure I did, and I did, but she said that when I was born, she looked into my face and realized she could not sacrifice me to the public school system. So she wanted to be, she wanted to be the main influence, like she wanted her her and my dad to be the main influence in our lives. And also they knew they could give us a solid education. Um, she did have a degree for elementary education. She had graduated from Baptist Bible College and she taught for a year at a Christian school near us. So. Oh, that's interesting. So what did, how did you feel about, did you, so did you homeschool all the way through then? No, we went to public school starting in 10th grade. Um, oh, okay. They, they did want to give us a little bit of a taste as far as like what it's like to not be homeschooled. Right. Yes. And well, it was still pretty unusual then to be homeschooled when you were being homeschooled. So how did you like your homeschooling experience? I really enjoyed it. I did very well with homeschool. Um, I was a bit of a stubborn kid, so I was not always compliant with what my parents asked me to do, but I, I did really well with school itself. I enjoyed completing the tasks and I would sit down and do my work. Um, my mom used multiple curriculums because she viewed the curriculum as a tool, not as right. like the be all and end all. Right. So she would get different curriculums from year to year and she would teach us. And then we would just do the work in the book. It was not the curriculum teaching us. So Right, right. So how did you and Mike end up homeschooling? Was it because you had been homeschooled and wanted to do the same thing for your children? We, we started discussing it probably right after we got married, um, what we would do. And he was originally on the fence. He hadn't met many homeschoolers and he had gone to public school and Christian school. Okay. And he was like, well, I'm not sending my kids to public school, so we'll do Christian school. I was like, well, why don't we homeschool them? I, I would really like to homeschool. And he's like, well, we can homeschool for a few years. And then he really liked it. He's like, we can homeschool a few more years. And now we're in eighth grade and not sending them to school at any point here. Well, I am so glad you persevered with Mike because you are both such a blessing to the homeschool community. We're going to talk about some of the things you're involved in at the end of the podcast, but um, Mike is the director of Homeworks by Precept um, and at Homeschool Division, and he is just amazing. He he has so much vision, and and I know he caught that vision from you, so... That's good job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it was easier for you to homeschool because you were a second generation homeschooler? I believe I, it was. Um, for me, there was really no guesswork. I didn't have to look up what homeschool laws were because I I had grown up with them and nothing really had changed. They had actually gotten less stringent hmm. in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. so. For me, it was like, oh, yeah, we do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. But it was not a big deal. I didn't have to do much research as far as that was concerned. When I started homeschooling, I just would, I mean, I almost had panic attacks as it got closer to the first day of homeschooling because we'd gone through all this legal stuff. And I'd read, the only thing I'd really read was Dr. Moore's book, Homegrown Kids. And so somehow I... I just had no help and I had not been an education major like you. I was an economics major and, and, and I never wanted to teach. And I just panicked the closer I got to that first day of school. Like, what am I going to do? You know, what am I supposed to do? What is this supposed to look like? So did you, do you, did you still have any of those fears when you started? Like, can I handle this? No. Um, Good. 
but that's more my personality. I just, if I decide to do something, I research it to no end um, mm -hmm. before I start. So I already knew. And the other thing was Mike and I had discussed because he had already worked for Precept. He was their IT director. And he, his compromise was, well, if we're going to homeschool, you're not a teacher. So can you use the video courses? So I looked and I was like, hey, this looks great. I can still be there. I can still help my kids, but I'm not the one having to put the lesson plans together. So for me, that was, that was super helpful. Okay, so, so let's, um, just for the moms and dads who are listening. So the videos that Abby is talking about are videos that are produced by BJU Press Homeschool. So Abby, since you mentioned that, let's talk about that for a few minutes because I know people have a lot of questions about videos. Um, for those of you who don't know, BJU Press videos, homeschool videos are really K-4 through grade 12, almost every subject. So having said that, Abby, just tell us a little bit about the videos and what you like about using them, how you use them in your homeschool. Sure, absolutely. So the video courses are pre-recorded and you have a teacher, a certified teacher that basically comes into your home and takes care of your entire year's worth of education for your student. Um, they are every subject, it's individual subjects, so it's not like one day's worth of classes all at once. So you can do, you can make it work for you rather than, again, it being the master and you just following along. So it is not, it's not like cyber school where you have to log on for a certain time. They are just pre-recorded videos there for your use. It's a tool. They include all the books that you would need. So for us, we get a full grade kit. But there are people out there that they would only use a few of the video courses and then they can just purchase the subjects that they would teach. It's just okay. it's another so what, assistant. What is a full grade kit? A full grade kit is just every subject you need. It, okay, it varies enough. based on grade. Okay. And people can get that either with books or with the videos or both. Yes. I recently um, went through a tour of the studios at BJU Press Homeschool. I was so amazed and flabbergasted by how much time each teacher puts into each course. These are done, as Abby said, specifically for homeschoolers, homeschooling families, and they may be 15 minutes a segment for a subject, depending on the age, or 30 minutes when the kid gets into high school. But they're really um, well done videos. The teacher spends a year putting each class together. My kids love the segments and what the segments are is depending on the course, they'll have either a cartoon or they have a special character that comes in. You can actually see all of the segments. Like there are, there are clips of the segments on the BJU Press Homeschool YouTube channel. So I'm not going to explain all of them, but they're, they're great little clips. Some of them are for vocabulary. Some of them are in the science courses. Some of them are even for math. So it's, they're just fun segments that my kids really enjoy the like the puppets and stuff it was just real fun to take this tour and find out how much creativity is in these so abby let me ask you a few questions do you watch the videos with your children or how does that work most of the time i do not having four kids i would be bouncing around in our school room all day mm -hmm. otherwise if i watch them with them so i don't i just rely on the students themselves, my four kids, to be honest, and tell me that they've completed. I do check their work because the videos still include books. So all their work is done in a book. So I can check and make sure they're completing lessons, make sure they're understanding concepts, but I don't need to sit there with them. If they do have a question, I can pull up the teacher's edition. Mm -hmm. It's online for me. Mm -hmm. And I can pull that up and read through and make sure that they understand the concept. So you're still, even though you're using videos for the instruction, you're still really involved in your kids' school days. Absolutely. I schedule everything out for them. I, I can choose which projects they do. If there are writing assignments or hands-on art project, craft project type things, I can choose which ones we're doing when we're doing them. I can assist with those kinds of things. But it really helps me to be more mom and less teacher. So the benefit to you as a homeschool mom is? I keep my sanity. 
Uh, because if I am homeschooling four kids and I'm trying to come up with the lessons for each of them and make sure I have everything planned out, I would not be able to maintain my home, cook my dinners, um, grocery shop. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. there's not enough time in the day for me to do those types of things and still do fun activities with the kids. Because I, I just remember for, for me growing up, my mom had five of us that she homeschooled all, the, all at once. My youngest brother tailed on when I was 16 years old. So he was kind of by himself. So there were five mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. and we were all involved in music lessons. And we called it was Monday Run Day, so we would pack <laughs> that's up our. Good. I like that Monday it, Run Day. Yeah, that's what it was. We would pack mm -hmm. up our school books, get in the car, and we were gone all day. Like we were just gone. We had everyone had music lessons. We had to be here and then there and then back again. It was it was insanity, and I, that was all we got done on Mondays, and mm -hmm. it it was a lot. And I only have four kids, and we're only involved in a couple activities, but I want to have time to do some more fun things with them. So like we had an impromptu park day the other day. I, if I had so much work waiting for me at home because I spent so much time planning our school days, mm -hmm. I, I would, something would have to give. And most likely because of responsibilities, the thing that would give was the fun stuff. How do you make all of that work? I use the homeschool hub, which is a feature that BJU press is actually was released this past year. It is an all-in-one homeschool planning tool. It's online and it's available for all users of BJU Press. It is the platform where their online video courses are watched. It also is available for textbook users, but the big thing for me is the calendar. And it automatically assigns the courses to the calendar day. And then I can readjust, I can add things in, I can add events in, field trips. So that I check that once or twice a month and I reschedule as needed based on what's coming up. So it allows me to be flexible in my days, but still keep a structured schedule without me having to erase everything over and over again. Wow, well, that sounds amazing. Um, so is the hub really expensive? The hub is actually included as part of your video course purchase and it is free for textbook oh. users. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fabulous. Okay. So do the courses come, um, are they online or are they DVDs or what is the format? We currently offer online video courses and DVDs. Mm -hmm. um, the DVDs are a 13 month lease. The okay. online videos, you definitely, I would prefer those because I don't have to have so many DVDs floating around my house. It's a 20 month right. access for online too. So you have a much longer period of time for those DVDs or for the online than compared to the DVDs. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So tell me this, you know, we hear a lot now about screen time and kids being on their, their screens so much. So how does that play with your kids having video instruction throughout the day? I don't count this as screen time for them, uh, mostly because they're not sitting there passively watching a video. Okay. During the video, they are not just watching. They are supposed to be looking at their books. They're pausing the videos to read. They're doing book work. And it is an instructional video. It is not entertainment. They are entertaining videos, but they're not used for right. entertainment. Right. And I do, you know, I do want to get back to this thing about the different segments they put in. Sometimes they'll have like uh, video clips from World War II or, you know, is I was just blown away because, of course, there were not video courses much when my kids were coming through high school, my older boys. And we did use a video series for math. But I just I had been exposed to videos where it was the the teacher teaching to a whole classroom of 30 students and it was long and it was drawn out and it was boring. I just was so blown away by how interesting for the child that yes. these videos are. I have a I have a extremely well-educated niece who has used the BJU Press Homeschool videos. And she said, I just like you, she said, I just appreciate so much that they did all that work so I can spend my time doing other things with my kids. And uh, Katie Morgan, who uh, works with Ginger Hubbard on her podcast, when I was doing their podcast, she told me one time, she said, I just don't know what I would do without those videos. They just make my life possible. And so we just all need to find what works for us 
and lean in. And it sounds like this has been a great solution uh, for you and your family. I mean, it's my kids love them. My son finished up. He Gabriel is in second grade. He's eight. He he is so good with math. Like he just it clicks. So he worked really far ahead and he's already finished his math. And because we don't have to wait for scheduled classes and he didn't have to have that classroom experience, like what you were saying with the video, mm -hmm. these videos are filmed directly as if the student is sitting directly in front of the teacher and he's the only one that is being spoken to. So he is finished with his second grade and he has started his third grade math today because it came. So he was so <laughs> excited. He just jumped right in. So oh, man, that, they that, love their videos. That is amazing. That That is really amazing. So I just want to talk about this planning thing for a minute because I was at a dinner um, a couple of months ago with some old friends and we had homeschooled together, you know, kind of coming up. And I remember Christy looked at me and said, I would not wish those planning days on any homeschool mom ever again. I mean, our planning could be, you know, could be torturous at times. And she just, we, and then I was telling her about the videos and the hub and different, because we're having this round table discussion about what's available for moms now. Yeah. And it was just blowing our mind. But we were talking about the fact that if you have painless planning, then you can have happy homeschooling, you know, it <laughs> such a big difference. It is, it is a huge difference. Uh, we can do, so the hub allows me in Pennsylvania, you have to record 180 days of education. Uh, that includes co-op, field trips, anything like that. But I need 180 days of education. And it's, I forget the minimum number of hours, but I mean, it's a normal number of hours for school day. The hub allows me to just print out at the end of the year. It says, here's the number of school days you did. So wow. <laughs> I don't have to have a calendar going check, check, check. Yeah. <laughs> Counting yeah, my that, days up. That is pretty amazing. So, all right. So tell me, um, so walk us through your school year a little bit. How, when and how do you plan? And is Mike involved in that? He orders the courses. I tell okay. him what we need. He orders them. <laughs> the part that he's really involved in is more of our field trips. So we camp as a family. And during our camping, we do not take our school books with us because the okay. whole point of camping is to get away and relax right. and do yes. things together. Yes. But we still do educational days. So we, this past year, <laughs> we toured multiple coal mines, coal museums. We toured our state capital on a camping trip. Um, we had never done that before because we always had smaller children and it wasn't it, it was not really worth feasible. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this past year we had a first grade, a second grade, a sixth grade and an eighth grade. And it was the perfect year to do it. They all got to see it. They all got to like marvel at the ornate rooms that they had in the Capitol. And they all knew a little bit about the government because all four of them have now had heritage studies like the community and civics and all that kind of stuff. So that was one of our field trips. And Mike plans those out. He looks at what's <clears throat> nearby. And he's like, hey, we could check this out. And I'm like, sure. You know, and, and let me just say, um, for those of you out there who may be looking to homeschool for the first time this year, or this is your first year, it is great to plan those breaks into your school year. It gives your kids something to look forward to. I mean, when we homeschool, we really do believe that the world is our classroom. And so wherever you go, like Abby said, it, life is a learning experience from my friends who camp. I've learned, you learn so much together about camping, just about life, <laughs> the things that go wrong and the things that go right. What is the, what is your most favorite camping trip y'all ever took? Uh, we went to the, one of the Nova parks a few years ago. It's Northern Virginia and mm -hmm. each there are state parks and each of them has a water park in it. It's really cool. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, they're small water parks. Like they're, I mean, they're massive pools, but there's like little water slides and all that kind of stuff. We thought it was great. And then we toured Mount Vernon and the Bible Museum. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. So you just hit on two of my most favorite destinations ever. So we, we did Mount Vernon with the kids when they were younger. It is just amazing when you homeschool to be able to 
go out and see those historical venues, those historical places, let your children walk through them. It's like living history. It's just one of the beauties of homeschooling. So you do live in one of the most restrictive states uh, in terms of homeschooling, and that's Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I'm getting ready to go speak at the New York State Capitol Day next week, and they also have much more restrictive laws than much yes. sta most states. But for you, the hub has been a blessing, and the video courses have been a blessing. Yes. Just in terms of that aspect of it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. It helps us with record keeping um, because at the end of every year, I need to have our students evaluated by a a certified school teacher, either a public school teacher or a private school teacher in Pennsylvania that has had several years of teaching experience. They need to look at our portfolio, which is a compilation of their work completed throughout the year. Um, and all we have to show is progress from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, but you still have to put together the work. So the fact that I have their books that come with the kits and not all the work mm -hmm. is done online, I have books so I can give them samples of work from that. I can also show them the record of grades. I can show, I just pull it up on the hub and I show them that. I can print their transcripts. I can print out their 180 day records and it's, I can print a calendar if I want. I just print the total report because there is a report section on the hub. So for me, that's a huge time saver. Okay. For again, for new homeschool moms and dads out there, I just want to reiterate that Pennsylvania and New York, there may be another state or two that do require that type of thing. Most states don't. Although many um, umbrella organizations uh, supportive of homeschooling will often ask you to keep a portfolio or some type of records of what your children have learned um, and what they've done throughout the year. And, you know, I wish sometimes I, I, I wish I had kept more of what they did in school so that I could show that to them as they get older and their homeschool and their kids, you know, so, so there is, it's really nice to have that, you know, just to have a record of their educational journey. So my mom gave me my portfolios. Did she? I, I have my third through eighth or third through ninth grade portfolios. I bet that's kind of fun to look it back through, isn't it? Yeah, it's really neat to have. So I show my kids, so we do save our portfolios. I We take out some of the work because some they're like, eh, but writing assignments, any mm -hmm. compositions that they've done in the lower grades, their drawings, any art stuff, anything they're really proud of, we keep. So, um, so Abby, one thing that's unique to your family is how much Mike travels. Yes. And my husband, Joe, traveled a lot while we were homeschooling. And so that, you know, that's just an added stress, really, in your homeschool journey. I was, I just couldn't wait till Joe would get home on Friday night. And Joe was a great dad. He still interacted with the kids all the time, but it's hard. So how do you, just for moms out there who face the same thing with their spouses, what do you do to make life easier when Mike is on the road? I plan simple dinners and it's not like cereal night. It's not that kind of simple, but one of my kids' favorite dinners <laughs> is something I, that my mom used to make on our, our, our busy nights. And it was basically it's ground beef, refried beans and black beans, and you eat it with tortilla chips. <laughs> so, my, and my kids think it's this huge treat. They're like, yay. <laughs> So it's like, it's like a daddy's gone dinner. I also make a lot of soup. Mm -hmm. And if he's gone for a week at a time, I'll make like a big dish of something and we'll have leftovers or we'll, I'll make two big meals and then we have leftovers and I alternate throughout the week. Um, so that's one of the big ones. And I know that Mike is really intentional about being home for birthdays and those things that can't be rescheduled or, you know. As, as best he can, our son happened to be born during his um, fall meetings that fall the same week every year. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so he, he can only make the actual birthday to be there if the meetings, if the week, the way the week falls. So he's been here a few times. He, he was there for the birth. He was like, I can't make it. <laughs> My baby's going to be born. Yeah. So... He, but we do celebrate. And again, this year, um, our youngest daughter's birthday is next Saturday. 
and we're celebrating tonight because I'm going to be at CHAP, which is the Pennsylvania Homeschool Convention. Okay. I'm okay. going to be there on Saturday. And I was like, <laughs> sorry, I'll be home late. I'll, I'll get home for dessert. We can have cake, open your presents, but I'm not going to be there all day. So we're celebrating tonight. Oh, that's yes. fun. You know, here again, that is just one of the beauties of homeschooling is the flexibility it allows you to have as a family. You can celebrate birthdays on the day. You can celebrate them a week early, a week late, and make it a spe special celebration. You can just flex with whatever you need to do to meet your family's needs. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the other things we tend to do if their school, if they have their birthday on a school day, because all four of my kids are basically, the two girls, the two older girls are born in August, but we start school sometimes in July. So if, if their birthday falls on a school day, we're like, Hey, no school. Dad's going to take you off for a fun. This, he always tries to take them out for breakfast for their birthday. So they get off school. It's yeah, not that that's fun. All those traditions are so much fun. Yeah. Um, one other thing, I just see Mike on Facebook a lot and I, he's always working on, um, D, DIY projects with your kids. It's so fascinating to watch. And I mean, that's, <laughs> a, that's a different education in and of itself. Absolutely. So we do, he is a very big DIY. He's not content to just sit and relax. His way of relaxing is getting projects done which is fantastic. Um, and they don't just turn into Mike and kids projects. Like I get involved in a lot of them. Oh, that's um, great. Because sometimes he needs extra, extra hands. Yes. And so, yeah, like last, was it last summer? Maybe two summers ago, we built a shed uh, on the side of our house and I ended up helping and roofing. And he has a picture of me up on the roof, putting the shingles down because that's how it worked. But yeah, our, our young or our second daughter, Callie is really into woodworking right now. Um, uh -huh. like she loves to help build stuff and he's trying to get the younger ones more involved, teach them our older daughter. He recently taught how to use, I think it was a jigsaw. Like he's just oh, wow. like, Hey, yeah. so learn how to use tools, be, be productive people. So that's one of the things we try to teach them. You know, I know another thing you have been great at is really trying to teach your kids how to be an entrepreneur from, Absolutely. from early ages. So tell us a little bit about, I know you've got a pie baker and um, all kinds of interesting things. So I started a violin studio where I taught violin when I was 14. And I had that up until after, after I had our first daughter, Emma. Really? Um, I did. Yes. I had 25 students at one point. I was working like three days a week teaching violin. It was fantastic. I loved teaching violin. That's amazing. Um, so I had my own little studio and I, after I had kids, I started a sewing business that I did for a while until I had more children and could no longer have the time to sew without it being a disaster. Right. Mike had his own company for years. He started in high school with his first company. Um, he had a web design company for a while. So for both of us, it's important that you can control some part of what you're doing. Even if you have a job, you can mm -hmm. always have that your own business to fall back on to bring an extra income. So we're just trying to teach our kids that if you have something you like, see if there's a way to monetize it, see if there's a way to make it productive for you and not just a hobby that for you to enjoy. Um, so yes, our, our daughter Callie started a pie baking business a couple years ago and she has sold, I forget how many pies she sold at this point, but she hit over a thousand dollars in sales and she sold to a local, um, diner. She had several. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and our older daughter, she is doing babysitting. She enjoys babysitting. So she's going to be working as a nanny this summer. Oh, that, well, that's really, that's, you know, those are such important life lessons and it's such an important part of what we do in our homes. Yes. Because you are teaching them life skills through the baking. And the, I think y'all have raised rabbits at some point. Yes, and we still you, have rabbits. And, and all the do it yourself projects, all the things they learn in addition to their schoolwork, it just makes homeschooling such a robust way to live. 
They have so many outside activities and outside interests aside from school. And one of the things that I find important is that none of them are flavored by what their friends are doing. Hmm, um, interesting. They don't have interests based on what their friends' interests are. They have interests based on what they enjoy. And same with oh, like how they, how they dress. They they dress. I mean, obviously, we have some input on what, what they're wearing, but right. they're not dressing to impress their friends. They're dressing in what they enjoy wearing. Oh, the, so boy. they don't have to worry about it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that's, peer pressure wise. Yeah, yeah, so. that's 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 really powerful. I mean, that is powerful stuff. So in keeping with monetizing um, the things that you love most, I want you to tell us a little bit about what you do, um, Abby, as a side job. I am a homeworks by precept consultant. I I spend my entire year um, assisting homeschoolers with questions about homeschooling. And I also am able to offer discounts on BJU Press homeschool curriculum. Um, there's a team of BJU Press homeschool by, uh, home, it's homeworks by precept. We represent BJU Press homeschool curriculum. And there's a whole team of us across the nation and we are always holding events that you can come get your hands on the books. Most of the events are free. Conventions are not free, but that's that's a whole other Right. Ball game there. Um, but we have homeworks events and curriculum displays across the nation where you can meet up with a a homeschool mom or a veteran homeschool mom and they can share their experience with you. They can share their stories. They can share input on what what works, what doesn't work. Maybe if you're struggling with some of this, some of your children with learning methods, they can help you with that. And you can get your hands on the curriculum and we're here all year round for support. Yeah, I, I will tell you, BJU Press Homeschool is the sponsor of the Zan Tyler podcast. And I have been amazed at this you this army of homeschool mom consultants, maybe 200 strong across the nation. I, I think it's one of homeschool, the homeschool world's best kept secrets in some ways, uh, because I have watched you and I have watched these other um, homeschool moms who are the homeworks consultants pray. I mean, they tell me about getting calls at midnight and, and praying with their families and giving them, um, prayer support and homeschooling support in addition to helping them learn how to use the BJU Press homeschool curriculum. I mean, it that is amazing. So Abby, I can't believe it. Our time has gone by so fast. Oh my goodness. How can people get in touch with you and how can they find a consultant if they need help? You can find a consultant. It's a website. It's homeschoolhelp.com forward slash map. Uh, I am on the map in Pennsylvania. Uh, my email address is on there and I have a website on the map as do all the other consultants. So you can contact any of the ones local to you. If you don't find one local to you, we all have our, our homeschool stories on our pages. So find one that you connect with it. If their story really resonates with you, contact them. They are here to help you. That's okay. what we're here for. So that website again is homeschoolhelp.com forward slash slash map map. and then you just click on the map and the map will show events and consultants correct yes okay yes you there's an option to put your zip code in and if you can't find one within a certain radius of you just start clicking dots oh okay that's fabulous well abby thank you so much for being here with us today you have shared so much wisdom that i know is going to benefit many moms and dads out there listening we sure do appreciate it thank you for having me it was my pleasure Thanks again for joining Abby and me today. Abby is a homeschooling mom just like you and is still right in the thick of things. So I hope this has been an encouraging conversation. If you want more information about today's podcast, please visit me at zantyler.com. Until next time, bye.